So it states that with respect to a fixed origin O, the lines L1 and L2 are given by the following pair. So line 1 is given by this R equation, which is known as the position vector, where the first column, i.e. the first set of vectors, is the initial vector, initial, initial position, and D is the direction. So this is very useful to knowing which direction the vector is going. And same over here, and then we're given some constants, lambda and mu, which represents scalar parameters, like a, like a common factor. Now, this question tells us that lines L1 and L2 intersect at point X. So you've got a picture a bit like this, where you've got two lines, oops, two lines going in, in the same direction or so, and they intersect somewhere here, and let's just call this one X. Okay, and we just have to find our coordinates here. So that's really, that's really all we have to do, really. That's all we have to do. So the key idea to do this is simply to notice that when these two intersect, that means that these two equations must equal each other. Or at least it's better to say that the i's the, will equal each other, the j's vectors will equal, and the k vectors. So remember, the first row the first row is are the i's, the middle row, j's, and the last row, the k's. So we could say, for example, that 4 plus lambda times minus 1 which is 4 minus lambda, must equal the second line, which is L plus lambda, uh, mu times 3, which is 5 plus 3 mu. So notice how we've got two variables. So we, we just need a second pair of uh, equations so we, so we can solve this simultaneous equation. Now next one we could say 28 plus lambda times minus 5, or 28 minus 5 lambda, is equal to the right side, which is just 3 plus 0 mu, or 3. And that's it guys, just solving this simultaneously, we can find that lambda and mu can both equal 5 and, and uh, was it, negative 2. And lastly, all you want to do now is just plug this into one of these equations. So for example, I'm going to take the second one because it looks a bit easy. But the bottom line is, I've, if you put lambda, into lambda 5 here or mu equals negative 2 here, you should get the exact same position vector. That's the expected result. So we can see that, so therefore the x can equal, so I'm going to take the second one, 5 plus 3 mu, or 3 or 1 minus 4 mu is equal to when at the, at the point of mu at minus 2 should give us position vector of minus 1, 3 and 9. Okay, so for this problem, I've, I've already gone ahead and decided to highlight and circle what is necessary to actually solve this problem. For example, d1 and d2 represent the directional vectors for the lines L1, L2 respectively. And the question is telling us is that we need to find the size of the acute angle between L1 and L2. And this acute angle means an angle less than 90, given that the, your answer is in, the, is in degrees to two decimal places. Okay, all right, two decimal places, so it should be a whole figure. So how do we do this? Well, let's have a look. <clears throat> so all you have to do is realize that there is a special formula, which is the cos theta, which equals the dot product between the two directional vectors over the magnitude of each one. And the magnitude is simply um, using 3D Pythagoras on a direction. And this is how the equation is expected to look like. So, the, the, I mean, because it's intersecting, it could be here, the acute angle could be in, in any of these positions, either here, 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 or here. Where, wherever the answer is, if it's not acute, then it's going to be 180 minus the answer to give you the acute angle. Now, let's go ahead and calculate the, uh, every single thing here. So, what is the dot product between the directional vectors? Well, that's simply saying we have to multiply the, the i, j, and k column independently. So, we're going to say minus 1 times 3 will give us minus 3 plus minus 5 times 0 will give us 0. So, this is the sum product, basically. 1 times minus 4 is negative 4. And now, the magnitude is simply like this. You just have to use 3D Pythagoras on the first directional vector, so of these ones here. So it'd be the square root of minus 1 squared plus minus 5 squared plus 1 squared. And you should get a result of root 27. Likewise, if you do the magnitude of, of D2, you should do the same thing. So it'd be 3 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 4 squared. And this one likewise will give you a root 25 or just a 5. And hence the final solution at the bottom would be the magnitude of d1 times magnitude of d2, which is just going to be 5 root 27. Alright, so it looks like we're getting somewhere now, isn't it? So all you have to do is, is solve this, find the value cos theta, 
cost inverse here. When you cost inverse all of this, you should get what did I get last time? I got a hundred and five point six degrees. So oh it's actually um two different places. Oops, I just delete it. Um, cost inverse minus seven over five root twenty seven uh, degrees. Oops, degrees. And I got 105.63 degrees. So therefore, because it's um, bigger than 90, we're going to have to find the acute angle. So 180 minus 105.63 should give us the acute angle of uh, answer 74.37.37 degrees. And that's it, guys. Hello, fellow mathematicians. So here we need to calculate the distance AX, which means the distance from point A to point X and then reduce the answer as a simple third. Now to calculate this is very easy. So let me get my pen. All you simply have to do is realize that AX simply means, or the distance AX simply means from X to from A to X. And to easily calculate, we just take the difference from X to A between them. So it'd be X minus A. The key idea is that you always do the second minus the first. That's usually how it's represented. Now all we do is look consider both points. We look at point A, which is given here as 2, 18, and 6, and X, which is considered, which is given as minus 1, 3, and 9. Now, subtracting X A from X, we're going to have minus 1 take away 2, which will give us uh, minus 3. 3 take away 18 is negative 15, and 9 take away 6 is positive 3. That's it, guys. This is literally your new vector. And now, this distance can actually be found by calculating the magnitude of AX. So the distance is literally the magnitude of AX. And again, this is just using the, the 3D Pythagoras. And all you have to do is literally open the square root and then square every single term in that vector. So you're going to have minus 3 squared plus minus 15 squared plus 3 squared. And then smash this and calculate and you should get 9 root 3. And that's it guys, that's all you do to calculate the distance. Okay, part D guys. So we know a couple of pieces of information here. It states that the point Y lies on L2, and then given that the vector Y to A is perpendicular to the line L1, where point A lies on L1 with this position vector, we need to calculate the distance YA. Okay, so that's fine. So before we do this, this actually encompasses a few things from previously. We need to see how the diagram looks like. And well, it actually looks a bit like this. You see? So I've actually gone ahead and drawn it. So we've got the line L2 crossing here. And if we recall, L1 and L2 intersect at point X. We found this in the earlier statement. The lines L1 and L2 intersect at X. We also calculate the Q angle. Find the size of the Q angle between L1 and L2, which was 74.4. And that is here. We also calculate the line AX, which is here, 9 root 3. So looking at this carefully, we got a clean right angle triangle to work with. And um, what else can we see here? So we can actually use a few things. We could use, um, in this case, soccer tour to work this out. Or we could use a sign room to figure out the next angle. But yeah, let's let's go ahead and find this distance, which is, let's, let's just label the side um, X. Okay, for convenience sake. So from here, you can picture a right angle triangle. So we have a nice simple one with length 9 root 3, length X here, and the opposite angle would be 74.4 degrees. Okay, so good old trick. Now, to do this, we just have to consider labeling some sides. So because this is the opposite, we can call this side O. So let me just write O here. And we can call this side the adjacent. So, oops, let me get my pen. Adjacent. And lastly, guys, so now we got this, we just need to use the relationship of so, oops, so, ka, toa. And for those of you guys who don't know, so ka toa is the trig relationship between sine cos and tan where o is opposite a is adjacent and h is the hypotenuse now which one do we use the way this works you look at your right angle triangle and ask yourself well, what's involved well we can see that the o is involved in the a and the only thing that's o and a is toa so this implies that tan of the angle 74.4 uh, degrees wait what was the correct angle 74.37, I think that's more accurate. But anyway, same thing. Must equal opposite over the adjacent. And opposite over the adjacent is actually um, X 
over a so let me write down x over 9 root 3 and therefore to find x well you just multiply 9 root 3 so it'd be 9 root 3 times tan 74.0 well, let's let's write the original one 37 degrees and that's it guys you just worked out and then you have your length and if you did work out what let's let's see what we get so oh yeah make sure your calculator is in um in degrees mode yeah so 9 root 3 times I should, I should have done this before 74.37 and I got 55.7 um, 7 point what is it meters kilometers I don't know so length for 55.7 so right here is x equals 55.7 uh, let's say meters, I'm not sure what, or units. Okay, and lastly, part E. So here we need to, it says that the point B lies on L1, where the absolute value of AX equals 2 times the absolute value of AB. So, and just to recall, these are the magnitudes. Now, find the two possible position vectors of B. Okay, so before we do this, I've wrote down the list of key information that we should have from previous problems, or, and at least ones that's related to this question. So we need to know that the, the absolute value ax we found earlier was 9 root 3, so that's good. The position vector a is 2, 18, and 6. And then the position vector b, because since b lies on this position, position vector of l1, we know that if we just let lambda equals b, then we can pretty much find it. Okay, so this is an expression for a position vector in b. I don't want to confuse it with the, with the letter lambda, so I replace lambda with b. Now, to find a, b, well in this case, we just need to subtract these two. So we do b take away a. Now let's have a go at that. So what is b take away a? So let me get my pen. So it's, go it's going to be 4 minus b take away 2, which will give us uh, 2 minus b. 28 minus 5b take away 18 will give us 10 minus 5b. And then 4 take away 6 will give us negative 2 and then plus b. Easy stuff. Now all you have to do is really just take the absolute value of this. So to do that, I'm going to do on this side actually. So the absolute value of a, b, let's have a look. This is simply going to be using Pythagoras' theorem. So it's going to be, oh, it's going to be actually one long equation. So you know what, let me, let me put another side actually. Let me just do the whole thing at once. So solving this entire equation here, ax equals two times ab, we're going to have therefore nine root three equals two times the absolute value, which is the square root. So it's going to be a big one of every single ab term squared. So let's have a look. So we've got two minus b squared plus 10 minus 5b squared um, plus, and we'll rearrange this, b minus 2 squared. Okay, okay, so that's that's quite big, isn't it? Let's have a careful look at this. So let's like, go ahead and expand each one, yeah? So this is just a case of just long algebra. So expanding the inside, so I'm going to keep it like this. 2 minus b all squared should give us 4 minus so 2b, so 4b plus b squared. Next, 10 minus 5b all squared should give us 100 minus, so we've got 5 times 10 is 50. 100 should be minus 100b plus 5b squared is 25b squared. And lastly, b minus 2 all squared should give us b squared minus uh, uh, 4b plus 4. And that's it, guys. All of this. And this all equals, of course, 9 root 3. Now, to get rid of the square, firstly, I'll divide 2 across. So we have 9 over 2. And then squ and it's squaring everything. So let's just do a little bit of algebra. So dividing 2, this 9 becomes 9 over 2. And to clear this one out, we just have to square both sides. So let me just quickly square this. So 9 over 2. root 3 all squared so you should get 60.75 or you know what 243 over 4 and now collecting like terms in the in this root so the root is gone now by the way that's gone so look at let's count all the b squared so we've got b squared here 25 so we've got 27 b squared so you're gonna do. You're gonna to have to use a quadratic formula afterwards, and then next one will give you so minus will be minus 104. So those can also you can get minus 100b and then 404 plus 108. 
and then subtracting 243 over 4 from 108 should give us 47.25 or 189 over 4 okay so let me just update these figures so plus 189 over 4 and all this equals 0 okay guys so what I did I just cleared the entire board and just checked everything and I realized I was supposed to put a minus sign for uh, 4b for the previous one so it should be minus 108b I've also flipped the letter b to beta so it doesn't mess up with the quadratic formula because b is already used so I'm using beta okay so I'm guessing everyone's familiar with the formula so I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it where in this case a would be 27 b is minus 108 and c is 189 or 4 so this is what we get so your equation should be something like this 108 plus minus the square of 108 so it'll be 108 squared minus 4 times a which is 27 and c 189 over 4 all over 2 times 27 and the two results you should get for beta should be mm, 3.5 and the second one should be B, so flip it so this is the plus positive answer if I put the negative I got 6.75 so nice almost round number so this, this one looks good and all you do is literally just plug it back to into here and just update the value so I'm gonna leave this one here but the final solution should be substituting these back in and you're done and thanks for watching guys